Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to a, another tutorial. Today we'll be talking about how to make the uh, classic future bass like square, warbly, lead, um, fill, or you know, transition, whatever you want to call it, that you commonly hear in uh, you know, your classic future bass tracks. And then before we get started, I just want to do a uh, huge shout out to uh, Amadex, who basically helped me create this sound. So all credit goes to him. He's a very talented artist, so I definitely recommend for you to check him out. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and show you the same sound or, you know, very similar sound um, in Ableton. Now, this sound is pretty much more or less almost the same. I can't really say it's exactly the same as those sounds, but more or less you have the crux of the sound and probably the only difference is, you know, the um, the processing, but you know, more or less, pretty much more or less the same sound, so yeah. All right, so here's the uh, sound without destroying it basically in distortion. And then basically with the decapitator. And then another one here. And then basically just destroyed. Cool. Let's go ahead and uh, create this. So pretty much, I'm actually just going to try to do it from scratch uh, here. So basically just have a serum. And it's actually a pretty simple sound, um, you know, once you like are shown how to do it. But, you know, to figure it out yourself could perhaps be, you know, pretty complicated if you're not too... Uh, familiar with this sound but yeah basically what you're going to do is uh, turn on the noise and you're going to use AC hum because actually if you use different um, noises it's not going to give you the same sound just turn that down and then we're going to change this into a square shape so that and then basically we're going to turn this on and then we're going to put this on the FM noise oscillator and then generally depending on the octave you know you may want to do an octave up or leave it at the uh, C3 octave, depending on, you know, where, where where you want to use it. But generally, around like 50% or so might give you the desired sound. So there you pretty much already have like the crux of the sound almost right there, pretty much. And then you definitely will probably want to turn this down and then add a filter because you can definitely hear some like harsher frequencies on top. So you but you don't want to do too low at the same time because it'll basically just cut out too much. So probably around 8,000 or so. All right, and then with without the filter, it gets pretty harsh, right? So around there. And then you can turn up some drive if you like. Probably around there. Let me just turn this down real quick so it doesn't blow up your ears. So yeah, it's more or less roughly, you know, everything else you can kind of leave the same. And then next up is basically just uh, some processing within um, Serum. Basically just, we're just gonna destroy it in um, distortion. I think soft clip or DOI or whatever could be usable. You can also try other ones too, but I think these are most ideal. For the one that I showed you, we basically went with this one. And then basically just crank up the drive. We're also gonna use some post and then put it around the same frequencies. Yeah, around there, be good. Uh, again, you can try different ones. We like DOI the most. And that's really all we kind of did here. You can also try adding a compressor or OTT, which we didn't really like too much, so we didn't put it. And also, um, yeah, I mean, you can also try some filters as it might create some interesting sounds, but more or less, we just had the distortion here and that was really it for the uh, for the for serum and then next step was decapitator uh, if you don't have decapitator not a problem you can also use like uh, Ableton's guitar amp you can try that anything that gives you distortion the the saturator isotope trash perhaps even Saturn I don't know um, how that would do but you know worth a shot right and then pretty much we just fucking destroyed it basically <laughs> And we used uh, a different style. Gave it like this kind of unique style, um, probably even more towards my own personal sound, perhaps, right? Um, rather than the A1. Uh, 
uh, and then um, after that, just do a uh, Valhalla Vintage. Why Valhalla Vintage? Probably just because it gave a more like a darker analog, you know, sound. Um, this is probably personal preference, so you're welcome to use whatever reverb you like. Yeah, so pretty much you're, you know, have the crux of the sound already right there. Pretty much the sound like, it doesn't sound exactly like it, but, you know, more or less, just probably due to the processing, it's not exactly the same, but more or less, you know, you have almost that same exact sound. Um, and then you're welcome to just try to play around with this. You know, obviously, you usually don't want to go too high because that happens. And too low just doesn't, you know, really give you that same distorted kind of like noise sound. So yeah, around 50% to 55% is usually probably like a, a, a safe or a good rule of thumb to start with and you can try adjusting there. And then basically just to make it your own instrument rack, you know, Command G, I don't really want to go too, this is more like a basic stuff. So, and then you just kind of click map and then you just kind of like, you know, macro these, so that, and you can now have a micro on the, um, you know, noise there. And then you can also do the same so forth for the decapitator and stuff. And then also another thing that you want to do with the decapitator is kind of like lower the high cut. Cause that basically when you distort this, or the living crap out of it, it's also going to have some, uh, give some harsh frequencies on top. So basically with this high cut, it will help, uh, basically, um, take that stuff out basically. And then without, uh, and then without the high cut. But yeah, that's going to be uh, it for this uh, tutorial. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If uh, you found it helpful or if you did enjoy it, please give the video a uh, thumbs up and then uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then also please hit the uh, bell notification symbol so you know when my next video goes live. I post more. I basically just going to post a lot more production tutorials, uh, on probably particularly mainly in future base. And then also some um, you know videos pertaining to my own personal journey as an EDM artist. Uh, and then also please follow me on my social medias. Um, I'm going to post shorter form, you know, again, production tips as well as probably some things about my personal journey uh, as an artist. And uh, yeah, please join the Discord as well. I'm looking to, you know, create a community where we can all help each other grow, you know, perhaps personally and, uh, you know, production and musically, uh, music wise. So, you know, if that's something you're interested in, uh, please join the Discord. Uh, again, I will leave, um, I will leave all the links in the description below. And yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much again for watching. Until next time, much love. Peace out.